But even still, our buses are much less cramped and stuff. Sometimes our buses are, there are people standing, and there were people standing right over you. And Oh yeah, no, I mean... Yeah, like, no, no, I get it. I've seen images of their buses. Yeah, it's like, now kiss, kind of close. <laughs> Look, I'm a smiley face. Why? Because why not? But yes, I would definitely go back to Japan in a heartbeat. I, I love, I've loved the experience going. I don't speak the language. I wouldn't really, really have anything to do there. Save stop by the Gundam store. That'd be the shortest. Well, there's all the kinds world. of stuff I would do. <laughs> I, cause I, I thought you said you liked like architecture and stuff. I, but it's not the same experience. It's like the difference between seeing a concert and seeing a concert on TV. They're very different. I suppose I have no interest in going to a concert in the first place. But that's the thing of I have no sense of community, really. Mm. Well, mine, it's not even about community. It's just, it's a certain type of experience. That you only get at a concert. And I can tell you... My experience with music goes seeing a concert, hearing a studio version, and then live on recording. Because a live recording sounds just so much less enjoyable than a studio recording. And it's monumentally, like, insanely less enjoyable than actually being there. Like, even if you have the best sound system in the world, it's just a different experience completely. Mm. Like, for a... Okay, it would be like, if there was a game you wanted to play, watching someone else play it, compared to playing it yourself. Watching somebody else play it is always boring. It's only good for data acquisition. I mean, I don't agree with that either. Eh, just my viewpoint. <laughs> Because I will joyfully watch someone else play games. I usually do that. It's just this particular game, for example, I actually do want to play. But, like, there are games I wouldn't want to play, but I wouldn't mind experiencing that I'd rather watch play. Hmm. Um, it really comes down to what the experience is. Like, I wouldn't want to play horror games, really, but watching someone else so I can experience the story, I don't mind that. I just don't have the sense of how to properly monitor my resources in a game where resources are really limited to crap. I mean, I get that. It, I mean, it just depends. It, it becomes more like watching a movie, I guess. And and that's not even really completely true, because it's more like watching a movie at home with a friend who's making fun of it alongside me, basically. Or, well, not even necessarily making fun of it, but commenting on it. It might be making fun of it, depending on the game. That's the best part about John Wolf is he plays a bunch of bad games and just like deadpans how ridiculous they are. <laughs> and so he's funny to watch. He'll like play these like cheap asset flip games on Steam and he like one of them he was playing he goes, This game is available to play. For multiple dollars. Because <laughs> he's just so disappointed in how bad the game was. 
available for multiple dollars. So many unicorn masters. They're not even all unicorns. There's a spider in them. Well, it's a fight. It's still interactive. But... Do they at least tape a styrofoam horn onto the mic? No. Um, Although the person who was carrying, who, who was training them, was wearing a horn. You can tell who set up this team. Me, actually. But it's all Griffins. Yeah, because I'm trying to hunt their cards, and when they're on my team, that gives me one more chance on this particular map to encounter them. Um, and you have to defeat them to get their cards. And uh, it's random, so the more times you can fight them, the better your opportunity. Uh -huh. But their card gives a really useful benefit, and so I trying to collect the they um, if you get a certain number of cards from a particular species of monster um, they give different benefits based on which species it is and the griffin one um, increases the amount of currencies you get at the end of a fight and um, since some of them you use on the same map uh, if you can get the currency in higher quantities, it makes it so that you can continue to search for other stuff easier. It and the Mimic is really useful, although the Mimic's going to be really hard, because you don't really have any control over if you're going to encounter a Mimic. And then you also don't have any control on if it drops a card. <laughs> and so it's... It's a lot. How does that statue thing work in it do? So it summons the monsters that you're requesting? That candle, yeah, I can pick them, and I use up a little bit of my resources more for every time I summon monsters to summon a set of monsters. It summons a set of five. So I try to summon 15, because it won't hold more than 15 at a time. And then I start it on app so that it lowers the cost again. These three, their cards, and so But it's still like a six and ten thousand chance, so <laughs> I guess it's thirty and ten thousand to get the power of something. In total, it's still a very, very low chance. So that sounds grindy as hell. I told you it has a Disgaea philosophy to it. Disgaea's grinding is different. <laughs> I mean, it really depends. To me, they're the same. They're the type of grind that I can actually enjoy doing. Whereas, there are other types of grind where I don't like it. And this particular grind doesn't bother me. If I can outthink it and make the grind shorter by outthinking it, I don't mind. Well, I mean, you can outthink it in some ways. Um, one of the things is for mimics... Um, Hypothetically, the main way that people would get a Mimic is to collect, or just go from map to map and just hope that you run into a Mimic. But the strategy is to get enough Mimics to be able to summon a Mimic and have it on your team and come to this map where you can summon your team as enemies so you can fight a Mimic. And that gives you one opportunity per map as opposed to one opportunity per maybe ten maps. And so... There's different forms of strategy that go into it, just like with the Griffins thing here. Using the candle and also using the crystal ball 
makes it so that there are a few different opportunities for me to encounter the ones I'm trying to find for the map instead of going entirely on luck. And it just so happens that this particular map also can, on occasion, summon griffins, which increases the chances even more for this particular set. But when it comes to when I'm going to be hunting the golems and the stag, well, this might have stags too. But um, <clears throat> other maps, it might be more sensible to go to those maps instead and get rid of the one chance to have the opportunity to possibly run into two or three of the monster on the map. Because it's going to have a higher yield that way. And then um, going after certain cards first also will increase the chances of making it easier to get other cards because, like I said, going, getting the assets means that you can use the candle more, and using the candle is probably the highest chance of getting run into them because you can summon more monsters that you're specifically looking for that way. So going after the ones that give you the ability to harvest more power, the griffin set, and whichever of the other monster sets generates power as it's a war, um, increases that. And then things that make fights faster for different ways also help, so if you have increases your spell damage or increases your attack damage, then those will help. And so yeah, it's all... There is still strategy to it, it's just not throw your guy that way so he can land on the item spawn thing quicker and go to the next floor to get better items. It's not those types of strategy, it's just different strategy. Uh, where's the warpy guy? It's not there. But it all just depends. Um, I prefer a grind where you can kind of take it at your own pace like this. I don't like grinds where, um, like with, um, I don't like grinds where you have to engage in them to play parts of the game. When, when they're just things to collect for collecting's sake, and there's no gatekeeping the rest of the plot or things like that, I don't mind it as much because I'm the one making the choice to do it. Whereas if it's like, uh, I think that in Grand Theft Auto there are a few examples like where you have to, um, I guess it's not really grind, it's tedium I don't enjoy. And so there, where it makes you do a mini game that the game is not designed around and therefore the mechanics are not as high quality but you have to sit through and experience Ooh, I think my name is... um but that or i guess a really good example is in dk64 when you have to do the old donkey kong game and you have to do it to complete the game and i didn't want to play the original donkey kong because it's not fun and it's hard <laughs> And you have to do it twice, start to finish, to be able to even complete the game. And I don't enjoy that. So, I, um... I didn't feel like you didn't play it, I just did. Oh, yeah, no, to get through the last boss door, you have to have both of the coins from the game. The rare coin. And 64 coins. Huh. It was actually not the part of the thing that kept me from beating it. The part of the thing that kept me from beating it is how horrible the jetpack controls are. Because you have to do a jetpack sequence right before that. If I had that, I actually would have 100% of the game. <laughs> but that stupid jetpack sequence was so tedious that I eventually was like, I don't care anymore. Yeah, no, I can get that one too. Yeah, I had every other everything in the game. We went through and collected every... We collected every just banana banana. We collected every banana coin. We collected every golden banana, every blueprint, everything. We had everything. We had every fairy photo. It was just that stupid jetpack section was so hard. And you have a timer in the corner the whole time telling you that you have to beat a boss as well in this time frame. And then I learned... If I had just dealt with it, once you go through that door, it shuts off the timer. <laughs> and that really made me mad. 
because now I don't know I can go back and do it because my N64 died. And the last time I switched from one game system to another, it lost all the save data. Yeah. And I definitely don't have the patience to do it all from the beginning, because playing the N64 in its time was a lot more of a thing you have patience for than playing the N64 when you played anything GameCube or later, <laughs> where the controls are better, and the graphics are better, and it's much more polished and all. The N60, the first generation 3D systems probably aged the worst of every game system. Just because, at least when it was 2D and really bad looking, there was only so much you could do with bad controls, because it usually was so simple, there wasn't much you could do outside of like an E.T. type game where just the game was bad. But the whole system didn't have to suffer that from. Wow, these guys look goofy. <laughs> um, and so, if you go back and play Atari, while they're definitely not as high a quality, quote unquote, games as the things that come after them, they're at least good at what they do. Whereas the early N64, there was a lot of slidier controls and catching on geometry that made motion sometimes really annoying things that end up making the gameplay experience less fun that you didn't really have as much of on that first or well on the earliest generations of game i mean like pong plays like pong you don't have to worry about slippery pong controls pong is kick-ass Slippery Pong Control sounds like it'd be weird. And slippery Pong is funny. I mean, it would depend on how slippery. At some point, it would just be like, okay, well, you just can't play this game. <laughs> Carnage Destructor. That sounds like a seven-year-old made that name. My name will be Carnage Destructor, and I will be God of all of the 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 evil villains. Etc. As opposed to the good villains. Yeah. There are good villains. Usually they fall under anti-hero category, but there's not always a protagonist-focused version. But you can tell based on what they're doing that there is. Like, has Mr. Freeze ever been a protagonist? No. But he has... A positive intention, he just has a very bad way of going about it. Positive intentions don't make you a hero. No. But you just said an evil villain versus a good villain. Positive, positive intentions only make you good. I think that he is better than the Joker. Everyone's better than the Joker. Yes. Joker is actually just a terribly written villain. Well, no, he's... exactly evil for evil's sake kind of evil. I yeah. think he's written pretty well. I think that when he has a malicious action, he stays in character. And I feel like his character is one that has merit. But he just is... I mean, he is the epitome of chaotic evil for a reason. He fits it to a T. He is crazy and malicious. I mean... I find him boring. I I don't know that I find him boring. I feel like... He's definitely overused. Yeah, I think he's... I, well, but he's iconic, and he's iconic for a reason. He is indeed that true, pure evil kind of evil. I definitely think there are characters with more complicated stories and probably are more gripping for people who are looking for that kind of thing, but I think that when he's used correctly, like the Heath Ledger Joker, for example, is an example of how you can create that character and demonstrate that it can be well written, even when he seems to have no cause and all of that. You yeah. can put that under the surface that, well, maybe there is something going on there. I mean, you can use it that way, it just... It depends on who's writing, 
And there are definitely people who have written all of the characters better and worse than other people. There's definitely people who, when you bring up that author of it, and people are like, oh god, that series, you know, I mean... There's definitely different tiers of quality. There's definitely... Give me your card. Give me your card. Disappointed in you, Griffin. You let me down. I start losing it, then that's not a good sign. Battle chest. Hi there, jumpy boy. Jump, 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 jump. Is that a walrus in a cat suit? I'm very sure I just saw a walrus in a cat suit. It's fine. Not. Are you the arbiter on fine? No. Uh -uh. Is that a Kelpie? Um, no, it's a unicorn vivifier. So it's still a surface force. Kelpies are the worst. That depends. The worst what? I suppose they're the worst sirens. And horses. Because they're underwater? That makes them very acceptable if that makes them average for sirens. No, I mean the horse part. I'd say they're actively trying to murder you. I mean, sirens are actually right. Yeah, that th that the siren part at all. You you know what a kelpie is, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. Kelpie is. I mean, a lot of monsters in their original mythology are dicks. But it's Irish. And. Most Irish monsters won't bother you. Aren't Pukas Irish? No. I thought they were Celtic. They were in Odin's Yeah. I still thought they were Celtic. I'll have to double check that. But Kate Sith? Kai Shi? Kai Shi? Eh. They don't care about you at all. They have their own little society where they pretend to be humans. Leprechauns won't bother you unless you're stealing their stuff. Which, to be fair, I will bother you if you steal my stuff. Yeah. Uh. Selkies just want to chill out on the beach and take off their seal skin and be human for a while on the beach. And then people go and steal their seal seal skin and make them marry them. Until they get their seal skin back and go back out to sea. That's a very specific thing. And most Irish monsters that I know of are just sort of like I'm just gonna chill over here, and then he's like, "Yeah, but what if, what if I did this? No, don't do that. Then we have problems." So Irish stories with mythological creatures in them are about humans being dicks, and the monster would be like, "Yeah, but no." 
See, I, um... <laughs> most of the mythology I know is Greek and Roman. All of their creatures are portable to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The Irish weren't like that. The Irish were like, no, we know we're dicks. Although, also, <laughs> a lot of Japanese mythology creatures are either trying to kill you or trying to steal your stuff. He's like, hey, 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 I'm purple. Jump 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 the only place I could think of where the creatures by default don't want anything to do with you and don't care is Ireland. I mean to be fair, a lot of the Australian things that will try and kill you, um you kinda have to go find them. Yeah. I mean, a jellyfish won't sting you unless you're in the water. And humans don't have to be in the water. Humans are not built for in the water. No. They don't even hold their breath very well compared to a lot of creatures. They're not good at in the water. You can, they can become better. Navy SEALs are scary. They are. This is like the... But they're seals, so are they really human? Hey, I'm not going there. <laughs> okay, what about army special ops? <laughs> uh, also fair. Bonking all the guys, and then they jump jump. If they survive. There's birds everywhere! There's been a leak in the bird factory. But are Griffin birds? They're half birds. They're also half usually lion, though not necessarily. Up there having a good time, huh? Or bad time? I can't tell them. They they like to bark. Our dogs like to bark. Well, two Most of them dogs. like to bark. Tucker's actually very very quiet. He will pretty much only bark when like mom comes home or dad comes home, and then a little bit with like when I or my sister. Comes home. 